Hello, Ian Gawler here. And from personal experience, I know that when dealing with a major health issue, emotions can be something of a roller coaster and affect everyone who is involved. So it's exciting to be able to share with you a new approach to emotional health that is not about trying to justify, validate or suppress emotions, but is about becoming comfortable with our own emotional expression and being more comfortable with others as they express themselves. So let us talk about what is normal and what may be helpful when our own emotions seem to be getting the better of us. Firstly, to say that it is natural to experience and express a wide range of emotions following the diagnosis of an illness. Shock, fear, doubt, anger, hope, inspiration, and so on. Fair to say, the spectrum of emotions is often divided into what has often been characterized as negative or positive emotions. These days, most prefer to use the words destructive or constructive, but you probably get what I mean. The intention here is to learn how to manage the full range of emotions and to feel at ease with them. So consider this, no emotion exists within a vacuum. It is not like we suddenly feel sad, fearful or joyful. All emotions arise within us in response to what we can call the story. The story is what happened that seemed to lead to the emotion and the story is often how we explain, understand or justify the emotion. This is what he did to me and now I feel really angry. Or this is what could happen and so I feel really scared. There's the story and there is the emotion that goes with the story. And this is our key to a new way of managing emotions. We learn to separate the story from the emotion. And depending upon the type of emotion, we give our attention to either the story or the emotion. Let me explain. Firstly, with constructive emotions. When we feel inspired, when we experience hope, gratitude and joy, those emotions are good for us. They're good for our health. They support our recovery. We want more of those. So this is where we use our intelligence, our emotional intelligence, and seek out stories that lead to those emotions. We seek out stories that inspire, that bring hope and generate optimism. To generate constructive emotions, we focus on constructive stories. Repeat those stories over and over, and in doing so, we naturally generate more and more constructive emotions. Simple, really. However, all too many stories generate the opposite, fear, resentment, guilt, blame, and so on. If we run those same old disturbing stories over and over again, we know we will get the same old disturbing emotions. And problem is, with these tougher emotions, they can be quite destructive. They tend to wear down good health, and they hinder recovery. We want less of those. Therefore, what we do with destructive emotions needs to be quite different. With destructive emotions, we use our emotional intelligence once more, but this time we choose to shift our attention from the story to the feeling of the emotion itself. By doing this, we learn to actually feel the emotion as it is, rather than react to it. So instead of becoming distressed by difficult emotions, we're now able to express them authentically and in a way that is far less distressing. It may well be we can learn to be at peace and at ease with even quite difficult emotions. What a relief that would be. In this part of Alleviate, you'll learn how to do this, how to go into the feelings associated with difficult emotions in a way that many people have found to be relatively easy but truly liberating. Generally speaking, 
Strong emotions are felt in our midline, in front of the spine. So the techniques teach how to use this knowledge to feel the emotion as it is in our body, rather than react to the story. Now, importantly, using this approach, the task is not to feel we need to change or alter our emotions. Rather, the aim is to develop a greater capacity to recognize how we actually do feel our emotions, where we actually feel them, and then to become more comfortable with actually feeling them. Once we have gone that far, then we can learn to become more comfortable with the emotional expression of those around us. And I've seen many people transform their emotional life and general state of mind using these techniques. So I invite you to give them a go. They're really quite easy to follow and can be used regularly or just when you feel the need. Best to listen to them when you have a bit of personal space and do not need to rush into the next task. And they can be listened to and practiced lying down or sitting up in your usual meditation posture. These exercises are available in my own voice or in that of my wife, Dr. Ruth Gawler, who is a medical practitioner with a great deal of experience in this field. So now go to the app, select your track and begin.